welcome back to my channel. I am super excited to be getting to film today because I feel like it has been one of those weeks where you just can't get in front of the camera. You just can't get your business like rolling and going. It's been that kind of week for me. Today we are here to talk about all of you beautiful, fantastic and wonderful oily skin babes out there and even those combination to oily skin babes you are going to want to watch this video. I took a lot of time researching products for you, researching ingredients for you, and um, that way I was able to come on here and make recommendations based on what I have found will help you the most with controlling and treating your oily skin. So oily skin always gets a bad rap. We always complain about being oily, we complain about being shiny, we complain about being greasy, we use all these horrible words, but the reality is, is that there's a lot of benefits to having oily skin. And I'm going to share them with you because we always want to be grateful for what God gives us. And oily skin, as luck would have it, does have some benefits. One of those benefits is having less flaky and scaly looking skin. That's never a problem that you have to worry about. It always makes your skin just look more hydrated, more luminous, and you never have to fight for that dewy, highlighted look because you come by it naturally. The oils that your skin naturally produce actually help with anti-aging. So you show signs of aging a lot more slowly than the rest of us or us dry skin babes who look like crepey and wrinkly old people pretty young case in point. And you'll never have a dull complexion. So these are all wonderful things to be thankful about when it comes to our oily skin. But there are some downers. We tend to be shiny. You tend to be a little bit more on the greasy side. I hate that word greasy, but for lack of a better adjective, your acne tends to flare up more often. You have more breakouts. Your makeup tends to break up and separate and not adhere as well or just slip and slide around your face. All some downers. Today, we have one goal, one common goal that we are shooting for. And that goal is we can control our oil production and reduce breakouts without stripping and dehydrating our skin. And we want this goal to be a long-term goal. I'm hoping by the end of this video, you will feel well equipped to go out and make smart product choices for you and your skin type. And if you have seasonal oiliness, maybe some of these products that I talk about today will be great for you to incorporate into your life during your oily skin times, like the summer. I do have some disclaimers. Skin is personal. Some of the things that I may share with you that have ingredients in them that are great for oily skin may not work for you because no two people have the exact same chemistry. So take that with a grain of salt. There's still a degree of experimentation that's going to need to go on on your end until you find the absolute right product for you. These are just more guidelines and a place to actually start. You can always consult your dermatologist. If you're having a lot of oil production, breakouts, things like that, that you're just finding are not helping, you try some of the things in this video and it's still not helping, a dermatologist is your friend. They are going to help you. That is their job and they know skin inside and out a lot more than I do. But this may, this video is going to be a good starting point for you. If you are pregnant or nursing, some of the ingredients that I'm going to talk about today may not be safe for you and your unborn child or nursing baby. So please consult your doctor before starting any new skincare re regimen or even ask them what ingredients you should specifically be avoiding. But I am going to talk about retinol today and I do know that retinol is one of those ingredients. So just make sure that you are doing your due diligence and talking to your OB. It may take more than one try to find the right product. And you can do that through acquiring samples depending on which beauty store you shop at. Sephora provides samples on all their skincare anytime that you need. Unfortunately, with skincare, it takes more time to see results. It can take up to four to six weeks of consistent use to see true results. So maybe spending the money on travel size items is a little bit more economical and smart on your part if you're not 100% sure that a product is going to work for you. That way you don't waste your money on a full size product. And also consistency is key. If you're not being consistent with your skincare routine, you're not gonna see the results that you are hoping to see. It's all about starting healthy habits and continuing on with that. And skincare is 
it's really, it's kind of a pain in the butt. I'm just going to throw it out there. It's a pain in the butt, especially in the evening or in the morning. You're tired, but the last thing you want to do is wash your face and go through a multi-step process. I get it, but kind of attribute it to like brushing your teeth. <laughs> you got to do it. You want to keep your teeth, right? Well, you want to keep your face. You want to have your face in good shape. You got to do your skincare routine also. Just put it on the priority list with brushing your teeth. Add five minutes onto your getting ready routine to do your skincare and trust me, you will not regret it. Before we dive into ingredients that are going to be great for your oily or combination oily skin, I do want to say make sure that you actually truly are an oily skin person and to do that, check out the video that I have linked in the description box. I just posted it this week and it talks about easy ways to determine your true skin type. Most of us are wrong and you'll learn about that in the video. Your ideal skincare routine should take place twice a day. It should take place in the morning and it should take place at night. And this is what is recommended that I found through multiple dermatologist recommended articles that I read. In the morning, you should always cleanse, tone, treat, moisturize, use your eye cream and your SPF. In the evening, you should always cleanse, tone, mask, use a mask two to three times a week, retinol, that's a step all on its own, moisturize, and eye cream. Now, do you have to follow this stringent guideline? No, but I'm going to take the dermatologist recommendations. I'm going to present the information to you in this video. And if you decide that there's one or two steps that you want to omit based on your needs, budget, time, whatever the case may be, because again, this is a very personal thing, I would definitely say that eye cream is probably something you can easily add later or not dive into, but there are certain things that you're going to want to do. And the first one is cleanse. That is a non-negotiable. You have to wash your face. You got to wash your makeup off and you got to wash in the morning because you've been sleeping and sweating and drooling and smushing your face into a pillow. You need to wash your face. Bacteria are on your face and that helps to create breakouts. So if you're not washing your face, like brushing your teeth, you got to do it. SPF, non-negotiable. Moisturizing, non-negotiable. Moisture is not the same as oil. Even an oily skin person should be moisturizing. Your skin still needs hydration even though it is producing oil like crazy. Don't turn off the video. I'm not nuts. I promise you this is the truth. Hydrating your skin with the appropriate moisturizers is going to make all the difference in the world. I'm not going to sit here and tell you to slather an oil all over your face. That's counterproductive, but I am going to make helpful recommendations with hydrators that oily skin people love or oily skin loves. And that way you'll be able to hydrate your skin. And when your skin is properly hydrated, it's not going to go into oil production overdrive, which happens when we use the wrong products, we strip our face and then our skin kind of knee jerks in the opposite direction and goes, Oh, I'm dehydrated. I'm parched. I've been stripped. I need to produce even more oil to rehydrate because that's just my job. That's what I do. I'm a sebaceous gland. That's, that's part of the problem. That's part of the reason why you're producing so much oil because you may be stripping your face. So you can get more breakouts and more oil hydration. It makes all the difference in the world. We need to hydrate. So we're going to get into it. Let's get into ingredients. Things that you want to look for that are good in a product. When you go to pick up a product, you're going to be overwhelmed. There are aisles and aisles of skincare products. Everywhere you look, everyone is saying, use this skincare, use this skincare. I took it down to a few products. I can't possibly go over them all. We would be here for at least three months. But there are certain things I want you to look for when you're shopping for your products for yourself if you decide not to use some of the ones that I recommended today. Anything that says non-comedogenic, non-comedogenic is a fancy word for not poor clogging. So it's been formulated with the idea that it's not going to clog your pores, which is good because that's something that can kick your skin into oil production overdrive and cause breakouts. Another thing that you want to look for is oil free. Duh, right? Look for things that say oil free. There are 10 ingredients that oily skin people love. Get a pad of paper, write this down, that way you can take a picture of it and keep it in your phone for when you're shopping. Clay. Oily skin loves clay. Specifically, oily skin likes bentonite. Bentonite is known to dry oil and clear pores. Sounds good, right? Second ingredient is retinol. 
this is the one I talked about in the beginning of the video. Retinol is good for pretty much everybody. So it's good for your dry skin, it's good for your oily skin, it's good for anti-aging. But why we love it so much for oily skin is that not only do we love us some anti-aging, everybody wants to not age or at least not have their skin age prematurely. Retinol actually helps minimize the appearance of blackheads. It helps to shrink your pores. And when you shrink your pores and tighten them, that means it helps to control the amount of oil that they produce. So that's why we love retinol. It's really a great ingredient. The thing about retinol, and I will tell you this, and this is why you'll have noticed if you paid attention when I was talking about the different steps of skincare that you should be following. Retinol is in the evening. Retinol is not a daytime use ingredient. Retinol actually makes your skin more sensitive to the sun. So that's why it's important to only use your retinol treatment in the evening and make sure you're using your SPF in the daytime because if you're treating with your retinol overnight, it's going to create more sensitivity to the sun in your skin during the day. So this is why the whole doing your skincare routine and doing your due diligence is really important. Oily skin loves dimethicone. Dimethicone is an oil-free moisturizer and it mimics your skin's natural moisture. So it actually makes you feel hydrated and moisturized, but not dry. And a lot of ingredients contain dimethicone, different found, or a lot of products contain dimethicone, I'm sorry. Different foundations, different primers, different moisturizers, different cleansers. Dimethicone is in a lot of products. Another ingredient that's oily skin loves is glycolic acid. It's actually considered to be a powerhouse against oily skin. And glycolic acid is used as an exfoliant. And part of that exfoliation and why that's important is again to keep those pores cleaned out so that you do not go into oil production overdrive. Hyaluronic acid is number five. Hyaluronic acid is like an uber moisturizer. It's oil free and it's like a supercharged moisturizer and it's good for everybody. It's good for dry and oily skin, but it's especially good for oily skin because it's oil free. Niacinamide, which also comes up in ingredient list as vitamin C3. This is a really cool ingredient and I didn't know a lot about this until I did my research. It's going to strengthen your skin's natural barrier and absorb sebum, which is the oil that your skin produces. It's gonna stimulate your skin's natural ability to produce collagen. Ooh, intrigue, right? It's also going to naturally improve your skin's renewal rate. So when I say renewal rate, our skin naturally has dead cells that slough off and new cells are made and brought to the surface. So we're constantly shedding our skin all the time, every single day, by the hundreds of thousands and millions of skin cells. But this actually, this ingredient helps your skin to do that at a faster rate and a more rapid rate so that your skin looks naturally luminous, it looks naturally younger, tightened. Um, it also is going to help with large pores and hyperpigmentation, which is age spots or like acne scars. Number seven is salicylic acid, another acid. This is also another exfoliant. You're gonna find this in a lot of cleansers and again those chemical cleansers are really good to help keep your pores cleared out. Salicylic acid naturally or chemically is inclined to draw oil so it's really great for getting into those pores and getting your face really clean but it doesn't strip. It's formulated not to strip. Anything with aloe vera is great. Aloe vera is a natural inflammatory. It's going to soothe your skin, especially if you're doing these chemical exfoliants. Aloe vera is going to help just to kind of calm everything down and bring peace to the land. Anything with vitamins B, C, and E, those are really good for your skin if you have oily skin. And I also wrote down some good oils because just because you have oily skin doesn't mean your ingredient or your skincare can't contain oils that are actually good for oily skin people. And they are going to be rosehip oil, evening primrose oil, hemp seed oil, and grape seed oil. We can't sit here and rightfully talk about all the things that oily skin loves without talking about all the things that oily skin hates. So when you're out shopping for your products, like I told you to look for products which contains the phrases oil-free and non-comedogenic, when you're shopping for your skincare, you want to avoid words like rich, emollient, super moisturizing, creams. All of these indicate heavier, more oily, more dense 
pro like products. As a rule, typically cream is used for a heavier moisturizer. So just make sure you keep your eyes out for that. Ingredients you want to avoid if you have oily skin are petroleum or petrolatum. You want to avoid sunscreens with an SPF higher than 30. Now this is something interesting and something I didn't know, but apparently sunscreens that have a higher SPF than 30, the ingredients that they use that are the actual sunscreen, like the screening part of sunscreen, actually tend to make your face more oily and actually kick your skin into oil production overdrive. So they say that if you use the lower SPF, then you're more likely to have less of a reaction with your SPFs. They talk about a toner. Toners are really important. Toners will take your skin after you've done your acid face wash and it actually brings your skin's pH level back to normal so that it doesn't feel stripped and it doesn't kick your skin into producing more oil. But there are certain ingredients you need to watch out for that they sneak into toners. Um, SD alcohol 40, denatured alcohol, ethanol, and isopropyl alcohol. And they do sneak these into these ingredients. I'm just not talking like a $5 toner from Walmart. I'm talking like a $50 toner that I found from a very prestigious skincare line that I thought for sure would never put denatured alcohol into their toner. Do you know how bad denatured alcohol is for your skin? And it was like the fourth ingredient. And if you don't know, the higher up the list an ingredient is, the more concentration of that ingredient is in the actual product. So, it, that was pretty scary. Alcohol strips your skin and it causes your dead cells to build up like we talked about before and producing breakups. Other ingredients to avoid, mineral oil, sodium laurel, laureth sulfate, beeswax, vegetable wax, paraffin, lanolin. And the worst oils that you can put on your face, like the major oil crime that you can put on your face are coconut oils, hazelnut oils, camellia oils, and sunflower oils because those oils are so high in fat. So they're definitely a dense oil that's gonna clog your pores and make you break out. So I went through, I found some products and I tried to, when I was shopping online, I did a lot of it at Ulta because I wanted to make sure that these products were obtainable. I didn't want to pick obscure products that were harder to get your hands on. The point to this is to make the whole navigating the oily skin world easier for you, not harder. I pick brands that ingredient lists match what I just told you and got done spitting out to you, all those scientific and stupid words that barely anybody knows what they are. And I tried to keep the price point as reasonable as humanly possible because not all of us can afford to go out and buy a $30 cleanser. It's just not in the cards for a lot of us. So I tried to have some more expensive skincare and some less expensive skincare, but still had good skincare benefits. So that's kind of the science behind how I came up with these items. I came up with three cleansers because step one is to cleanse. So the first one that I came up with was the Philosophy Purity Made Simple Cleanser. This is not an oil-free cleanser, but the oils in it are the good oils for your skin. So if you find that you're an oily skin person, but you have patches of dryness, you know, that might be something that you want to think about. Another thing about this cleanser is great for sensitive skin. It has a light, lovely fragrance. Uh, it's, it's safe. It doesn't have any like physical exfoliants, no beads or anything. So it's safe to use day and night. It's good for makeup. They make makeup removing wipes. They make a gel cleanser. They have a very wide variety in the Purity Made Simple line. But the original Purity Made Simple cleanser was actually matched up the good ingredient list really, really well. Another one that I found that was really good is the Mario Badescu Enzyme Cleansing Gel. And something to keep it a little bit more affordable, the Cetaphil Daily Facial Cleanser was also a really good one as far as ingredients. To treat your skin, I found two treatments that uh, really intrigued me and they're both by The Ordinary and I do not personally have experience with The Ordinary brand, however, they really had a good ingredient list and they were very reasonably priced. All the products I picked in here also have four and a half stars or higher. So I was very purposeful with this list. I didn't add that in the beginning of like, going into these products, but they are all very highly rated and not just highly rated by like 20 people, but hundreds 
of people. The Ordinary has two treatment products or two serums that really might help you. The first one is called the Ordinary 2% Hyaluronic Acid, which is a 2% hyaluronic acid concentrate to put on your face that you could moisturize with if you need, if that was all you needed, or if you find that you need some more moisture on top of your, your hydrator, you can use that. And I also found the Ordinary Niacinamide 10% plus Zinc 1%. So that was very interesting to me that they made that, um, especially with everything that I read about niacinamide. And I think I will be purchasing this product, even though I'm typically like dry with a little bit of seasonal oiliness. I'm going to try that because niacinamide sounds like the bomb. And also both of these, both of these treatments that I just came up with from the ordinary were nearly five stars, like so freaking close to a five star rating for toners. I found three. There's the Mario Badescu glycolic acid toner. There's the Neutrogena Alcohol Free Toner, and you had to be careful and get that specific toner. Neutrogena makes another toner that had um, denatured alcohol in it. So you had to be very careful and get that very specific Neutrogena Alcohol Free Toner. All the products I'm talking about right now are linked below, so you can't mess it up. It's okay. And also the thing about the Neutrogena toner, and I, I included this in the list because it was one of the more reasonably priced toners. A lot of the toners that had good ingredient lists were a little bit more pricey. I guess you get what you pay for. The thing I liked about the Neutrogena toner, it didn't have the bad ingredients, didn't have a lot of the great ingredients, but it didn't have the bad ingredients. So it's what I consider a very basic toner. It's gonna do the toning job. It's not gonna give you any frills or any extras, but if you're on a budget, at least you're getting what you need. And then the third one that I found is by The Ordinary, go figure, um, the Glycolic Acid 7% Toning Solution. I picked one mask. There are hundreds of masks, hundreds. But I picked this one because of the ratings that it was given online, the ingredient list again, and then my own personal experience. And I picked the Origins Clear Improvement Active Charcoal Mask. And this is something you're gonna wanna use two to three times a week in order to clear your pores and help to exfoliate and draw out oils and impurities. You're gonna moisturize then, of course, that's next in the list. I have five moisturizers because I couldn't narrow it down. I kind of love my moisturizers. So the first one is the Peter Thomas Roth Water Drench Hyaluronic Cloud Cream. Now, this is one of those creams. And this one is gonna be a little bit heavier of a hydrator. And if you are prone to breakouts, maybe a smaller sample size of this would be better, but the ingredient list really impressed me. And then the Clinique Moisture Surge, Moisture Surge, 72 hour auto replenishing hydrator. That one had a really great ingredient list that matched everything we talked about before. Tatcha the water cream, like I said, it said a cream, but that is not, it's not a cream. It's very much so a light hydrator. And when you're smoothing it into the skin, it feels very wet. It does a great job of hydrating. It doesn't leave any of that sticky, sticky tacky behind, but my skin does not feel parched. I've been using it all summer and I really do like it. And the ingredient list is on point also. For something, or for two that you can get like at the drugstore or that are a little bit more affordable than the first three is the, the Olay Regenerist Whips and the Cetaphil Moisturizing Lotion. So the Cetaphil Moisturizing Lotion had good ingredients, but again, it was more basic. The Olay Regenerous Whips had a really good lineup of ingredients for the things that we talked about before. For an eye cream, I just picked one. And I picked the first A Beauty Retinol Eye Cream with, tri with triple hyaluronic acid. And I picked this because it was hydrating, but with a good hydrator and it had the retinol. And honestly, eye cream is really specific. Sometimes you have puffiness, dark circles, wrinkles, oiliness, aging, signs of aging, whatever the case may be. It's a personal thing. So just use your ingredient list, but I can tell you that that first A Beauty Eye Cream it, it's, it fits in the parameters that you want to be in. For sunscreen, I found two. And the first one is called the Neutrogena Hydro Boo City Shield Water Gel Broad Spectrum SPF. Anything that's a gel is going to be good for your skin as an oily skin person. It just is. The water, this one just really intrigued me. The way that it was described in the, in the ingredient list, the way it li lined up, I actually think it sounds really good um, and I feel like you're gonna get that um, 
that broad spectrum. You know, you're going to get that PA++, which is the UVB, and then you're going to get the UVA protection with the SPF 50. But the way they formulated it, it's better that it's not going to, like, kick your skin into overdrive. The other one that I found is, again, a Neutrogena product, and it is the Clear Face Liquid Lotion Sunblock, which is intended to be non-comedogenic and has good ingredients, and it was SPF 30. So they're definitely looking out for the oily skin babes of the world. Lastly, I picked a retinol product, and again, there are a ton. And they have retinoids too, which are a little bit less harsh, but do a lot of the same things that retinols do. I'm a huge fan of Ula Henriksen's retinoid uh, from the Transforma Transformation Skin Line. It's in a white bottle with blue, blue writing. It is a retinoid. I will link it below for you. But it's really good. But if you want a true blue retinol, retinol is expensive. You're going to pay, but it's going to work. It does work. So retinol... I found the Murad Retinol Youth Renewal Serum, and this had very high ratings. It has a high concentration of retinol. The price point is mid median, mid-level, and I have had a lot of success and heard of a lot of success with the Murad line. That's why I feel confident with recommending it to you today. So then I went through and I highlighted in pink the products that if I were an oily skin babe and I was going out and I was going to buy myself a skincare routine. The ones from that I chose out of this lineup that I would buy. And you can fast forward to this part if you don't really care. But I thought that you would want to hear if I were going to go to the store what I would purchase. I would get the Philosophy Cleanser. I would get the Ordinary Niacinamide 10% plus Zinc 1%. I would do the Mario Badescu Toner. I would do the Origins Mask, which is the only one that I recommend it because honestly... I, I just like that mask. Like I said, the ingredients line up. It's a good mask. I would get the Clinique Moisture Surge Lotion, which actually surprised me, but the ingredients were the best fit and the way the product was designed sounded like the best out of the five. For the eye cream, of course, I would go with the only one I recommended, the First Aid Beauty. The sunscreen, I would do the Hydro Boost City, um, City Shield Water Gel. That stuff sounds awesome, and actually I might look into it even though I'm, you know, not typically oily skinned, but that just sounds like something that would be less heavy underneath all my makeup, because once you wash and serum and eye cream and moisturize, then you got to put an SPF on top of it, you can feel a little bit layered up. So I'm thinking that might be really good. And of course for the retinol, I only picked one retinol serum. So obviously the Murad would be my first choice. So what did you think? Did this video help you at all? I, I would really love to know in the comments, like your true feedback is this, you know, I'm posting this video in August of 2019. So these are current products, things you can get your hands on right now in store or online. Like I said, most of it is on Ulta.com. It's all linked below. Let me know what you think. There's a lot of travel sizes with a lot of these brands. So if you want to get yourself a bunch of minis and try it out and see what happens, are you going to go and shop with these ingredients? Are you going to check your current skincare products? I can tell you I am throwing away two of my current skincare products based on what the ingredients are in them. Maybe I'll include that in a trash video coming up next month. Next month. But... Did this video help? I sincerely hope that it did. That was my true inspiration for making this video was to help those of you that are struggling with your oily skin. Please let me know in the comments below if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe, stick around if you're a dry skin babe. You're next, you dry, the combination dry girls and boys, you're next. So I hope that you stick around. I hope that you subscribe. Please share this video. Share this with everybody that you know who has oily skin troubles because believe it or not, this is actually a big concern for a lot of people. I hope you all have an amazing day and I'll see you in my next video.